Hello, my name is Jared Quenzer. I'm an applications engineer at Worth Electronics. I have a focus on EMC and power. And today I have a demo where we're going to look at EMI on a flyback converter and how to fix that. So with the board that we have here, this is for training that we offer to customers to talk about the fundamentals of EMC and how to solve them. We have the, the main board is a flyback converter, which is having problems with EMI, which is good for this demo, so then we can talk about how to fix this. And it's basically powered by a laptop power supply, so it's safe for showing to customers or at trade shows. We have a LISTEN, a line impedance stabilization network, a configurable filter board, so then we can choose different common mode chokes, different X caps, Y caps for different purposes. Of course, the flyback board, and then we have an electronic load so we can change the amount of power that's being drawn on the flyback converter with just turning a knob. So right now we have this five volt, one amp output, and let's run a baseline test to see where the noise is using this Rodian Schwartz test receiver. And we'll do a baseline test and then we'll talk about a couple different techniques that we can use to basically solve this noise. So there I just did a live sweep. So if you wanna look at this test, Basically, we have a fundamental frequency at 300 kilohertz. That's a switching frequency of this converter. All of the noise and harmonics after that. And you can see it's crossing the quasi-peak limit line by quite a bit. So the peak is close to 70 dB. And then also in the 10 megahertz range, we also have some more noise that's caused by basically the differential current that's circulating on the board from your switching circuitry that differential current can actually cause common mode current based on parasitic elements on your board, like uh, the board layout and your heat sink, etc. So this is our baseline. So let's look at finding a solution for this. So the first thing that we'll do is with this configurable board, it's really nice because then you can just disconnect different things and quickly change out uh, different comma mode chokes to find a different solution. So we'll start with a manganese zinc comma mode choke. This would be a standard one that most people would probably go to when they're doing a design. They just pick this off the shelf, say this looks good enough for my application. So let's put that in and then we'll turn this board back on. We'll set the current back to one amp so that we're doing this measurement so we're doing this measurement under the same load conditions. And then I will add another trace. And run. So now this green line is the conducted emissions noise with that manganese zinc common mode choke in the circuit. So now in most frequencies we pass this might be hard to see, but now we're below 60 dB microvolts on the peak. All the harmonics obviously are much lower. And then even in this 10 megahertz range, we have really good attenuation from that common mode choke as well. So that's great. We passed. But one question that I have is, can we do a filter design using a much smaller common mode choke? So if we look at these side by side, they have similar electrical performance, but yet the nanocrystalline choke with the black is very small. So this is, if you have a design that's very power dense, size or weight is a concern, this might be a good option for you. So let's put this in the circuit and see what happens with the noise. So again, we'll power it up and Turn it to one amp again. And then I'll add another trace so we can compare that. So now it may be hard to see, but there is an orange line that's between the yellow line and the green line. So as expected, this nanocrystalline core isn't quite as good as the manganese zinc core, but 
just by looking at the size, that would be expected because you can only get so much inductance and impedance out of a certain size package. But for the size, it seems to be doing very good. The peak is better, it's below the limit line, but we're still failing at a couple of the harmonics and then again in this 10 megahertz uh, range. So from experience, I know that differential mode is an issue with this and that's probably what's causing a lot of this. The, the differential mode currents that are causing common mode currents, common mode noise, sorry. And so one of the things that I want to do now is I want to add an X capacitor. And so if I add this X capacitor to the circuit, that will help with the differential mode noise in theory. But let's actually measure that and see, see what changes. So now the purple line, you can see, is very good. It's the lowest of all these lines. The peak is below 50 dB, which is passing with a nice margin. All the harmonics are passing with a nice margin, and especially in this 10 megahertz range, you can see how low that line is. It may be hard to see, but in most of the frequency range, besides the peak and the harmonics, everything is pretty much below 30 dB microvolts. So, by using a uh, much smaller nanocrystalline common mode choke and an X, X capacitor, it's a competing solution with the manganese zinc core. So in summary, that's the demo. With this demo, we can also look at other things as well. But the main thing I wanted to look at today was A, how to design a filter, and then B, how to design the most power dense filter possible. Thank you.